Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a SQL Server deployment step by step, and we'll be going through a demo. In this demo, we'll be learning these fundamental things that when you receive a request for SQL uh, for SQL Server production deployment, these things you should look into. The first up here is view the documentation. When I talk about documentation, what I'm talking about is the documents. Any organization that you work with, they have some sort of documentation to move. Um, to promote changes from their uh, test environment or from their UAT environment to their target which is production environment. It doesn't matter if it's an Excel sheet, it doesn't matter if it's a third party such as ServiceNow. These uh, fundamental points that I have put down, uh, being a DBA you should look into those. So number two up here is view the code that is being deployed or promoted to the production. You should always, always make a habit of viewing the code. You shouldn't take um, just the documentation uh, and blind look and take the code and promote to production. You should always basically uh, review that code. And number three up here, check to see if rollback is included in documents. Since you're dealing with production, make a habit of think that what if something goes wrong. So if something goes wrong, what is our fallback plan? The fallback plan is rollback. So if rollback is not included in the documents, you may want to include that or you may want to communicate with whoever put the change control in that where is the rollback. If there is a rollback stated that you can take the backup of the table, if it's impacting table, whatever the object is being impacted, make sure that you have a rollback strategy, make sure that you have a backup. So if something goes wrong, you can uh, roll back uh, all that pr production changes that you just made. Number four up here, take the necessary backups prior to the deployment. When I talk about necessary backups, there are uh, best practices video that I have put out there that if it's a, a database and it's changing a lot of database, it is good idea to go ahead and take the backup of that database. And if it's changing just couple tables and, tab and data in the table, you, you should go ahead and take the backup of those tables, the data of those tables, so that if something goes wrong, you can go ahead and retrieve all the data from the backup tables. And number five, communication. This is really important. You need to communicate if you don't see, a, a, for example, if you don't see a rollback and you think that a developer or whoever the change owner is should have put the rollback plan right here in the rollback and it's not there, you should send an email or call him that rollback is not there, you're not moving forward in production change control. So communication is basic key uh, as long as the communication is open between you and the change um, owner, then things will get much easier for you. So I'm going to show you right here real quick, uh, it's an Excel uh, way of uh, documentation right here. I'm not, uh, I don't have service now, otherwise I will show you the service now but uh, Excel has all the necessary information that um, usually the deployment takes in SQL Server so here's Excel so this is just a um, um, spreadsheet that has different changes first the database change request form is called uh, uh, DB change request form so date of the request requester name right here all that information is kinda necessary for uh, documentation, change documentation, whatever you put in production that's documented. And up here, uh, type of change. Keep in mind, these documentation is not only just for the information of your uh, IT organization. It is sometimes also mandatory for your audit purpose. So if auditor comes in and they wanted to make sure that who put that change control and when that change control went in, you if you would have all these documents saved, somewhere you can provide that information and if you don't you will fail the audit so this is just a, a up here uh, this kind of um, change right here a few points I want to mention right here the change type is is uh, really um, one of the uh, key thing that what kind of change is, is it a break fix is it a planned change it's emergency change if you drop down I have some reconfiguration enhancement standard maintenance emergency fix un uh, unmanaged change so these kind of uh, I, I just came up with all this but um, in your organization whatever the change type that you wanted to put it should have that main focus is right here and under this column that there should be uh, a type of 
change whether that change requires downtime right here that's very important because you don't want to see your production going down if it takes uh, uh, you know the long time to execute that change and it requires downtime then it means that you can't really do it during business hours so you have to be planned right here how much is the risk risk assessment reason for the change who is putting the change all this information is really mandatory and for the execution of this change right here is main thing for the DBA to look into so first of all if the change changes are being done you are taking changes from source to the destination you need all that information so what is the source SQL server because in organization there are multiple SQL servers there are multiple environments so you would like to have that that what inform what source is the SQL server that I'm going to use to get the information let's say you're moving uh, a store procedure so right here I changed one store procedure that store procedure name should be here and right here should be the source name where you should get the store procedure now there are different methods to move the changes from source to destination and it could be a team foundation server it could be a compare tool if you just moving the schema and you have a compare tool such as visual studio or um, a third party tool that compares the two databases and sync the changes so there there are different methods i'm not going to go into those methods but just uh, for the sake of deployment i wanted to show you that how it should flow but in this example right here since this is not filled at all so what it means that we don't have source information and why we'll find out in a second and right here is why because this is just updating a, 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 a table right here and it is going to run on target keep in mind that this is important when running a script that did you test this script did it for work well in your test did you get the ex uh, expected results and look what he wrote right here whoever put this chain control that executed against test system with expected results please see attached so sometimes they will have attached um, uh, documents the results that this is what the, the results I got in test and also one thing important when um, developers or whoever on the change they run in test tests database may not be exactly the same as production so the the results shouldn't sometimes doesn't match with production but up here mostly the folks that put change control in and in production support they have read access to production so they can basically go ahead and read the data in production and tell you exactly uh, instead of update they will use a select statement to see that how many rows they are affecting with this kind of where clause right here so they will tell you that they are expecting only one row to be expected and when we will do it I'll make sure that you understand that how you want to make sure that this matches what what it is in the uh, change control and if it doesn't matches then how you can quickly roll back uh, and that would be our begin and commit transaction uh, uh, formula so just quickly let's take a look all other right here um, if you have a service now you will really have most of this information right there so this form is um, just as an example I'm using that uh, these kind of information are fundamental information any organization you use so if you're learning that what exactly the deployment is then this is this will give you a kind of kickstart that oh okay this is how the deployment look like and this th these are the mandatory steps that I should look into the documentation it doesn't matter whether it, it, it's an Excel or a third-party tool that they are using to give you to provide a DBA with all this information so now let's go ahead and uh, perform our demo this is our script right here so we can go ahead and copy this script now we know that this is updating uh, a table in our target server right here so let's go ahead and connect with our target server I'm going to connect with this is the target server so I'm connected with target server now let's see that what database they mentioned and up here it says sales orders so let's go ahead and find the sales order database
right here is sales order data database so let's go ahead and click new query and now we have a script now I don't want you to run this script right now but just take a review this script script says that update a customer uh, table and he's updating the phone number right here where for this guy okay so this is update let's go back to our documentation right here is the script that we are going to run on sales order database now what if something goes wrong what is the backup plan let's take a look in backup policy please back up the table now this is coming from uh, the change owner please back up the table there are a couple issues with backing up the whole table because what if the table is really big and it, it takes so much space and you don't want to create another copy of that table and have that space unnecessary because it's just impacting one row so maybe you wanted to uh, call that change owner and say uh, can I go ahead and just store the data that is for just this row rather than the whole table and that would make more sense but I'm just putting scenarios out there for you uh, for your bigger change in this demo I'm using just for demo purposes just a very little script but we're going through everything that you will go through for a bigger change not just this 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 little uh, change so let's go ahead and um, we, we got the communication and we know that there is expected row one row to be impacted so I am going to go ahead and make sure Put, I put in begin trend with any update insert delete so you want to make sure that you run in one transaction and do not write commit right here unless you're until you're sure that your change has committed just only one row right here if it commits two rows you want to roll back the change which is roll back trend that is just the uh, um, T SQL for that so I just want to make sure that you understand the concept of begin change and uh, commit change if you commit the change it'll be really hard for you to roll back so it is always a good practice to just click on begin change maybe you should put in your query always when you click on new query it will start with begin change it's always a good idea so let me go back to uh, before we run that this is just the script it could be as as I said views and store procedure that you need to go go through so um, I put this at a wrong this is a backup policy I would go ahead and take this and I will put back out plan this is where I sh should have put it but it doesn't matter really as long as you um, you know go through all uh, kind of uh, um, information right here where source target uh, a database uh, uh, if it's a new database if a new index new SSIS package this is all related to SQL server DBA stuff so you want to make sure that you understand all these points that I'm showing that it would be there in any third-party tool that you're using so let's go ahead and um, run this script right here all right so with the begin trend it shows one row affected right here so let's go back to the documents and see the document the the change owner said only one row should have been affected by this uh, um, script so that is true we're good all you need to do right now is commit trend because you got the expected results if it would have been two rows then you would not commit the trend you would pick up your phone or um, online chat or whatever and call uh, the change owner and tell him hey you told me that it's gonna be uh, it's gonna impact just one row it's impacting basically two rows so what do you want me to do I'm not going to commit this change so he might go back and look in production and say oh yes we, we got another uh, uh, record so it is okay for you to go ahead and commit so that that's where I uh, you know put out here that communication is very important when you're deploying uh, your SQL Server change so let's go ahead and commit the change and now this is change is committed let's go ahead and see that what results we get just to verify that this change has taken place
and we're gonna go ahead and use the same where clause so that makes it really easy as you can see that th this was basically his he was updating the phone number right here 704 716 2621 so it has taken place so this is the verification from DBA that what action he performed is basically in SQL server so we can go ahead and and close this and this action is completed all you need to do at this moment is send an email that this is completed and with the results that one row was impacted please verify and now since you have verified for yourself or you can send the result of verification that it is showing this result after the change then um, you know he may not need to verify but he has uh, read permission in production when I say he that means the change owner whoever putting the change control the developer so it's, it's going to be um, for, for him it's going to be that okay the, my change is in production and it's looking good so basically this is how you do the deployment in in this is very simple this was one script just for the demo purposes but we talked a lot about uh, um, bigger changes that what you need to look into so these are the things really uh, matters when it comes to DBS you you need to uh, at least look at these five points and make sure that whatever the documentation you're using you are making habit uh, of yours right here to when it comes to SQL Server deployment in production and I hope this little demo helps